Who said black and white photography is a dying medium? If you think so, think again. Today on Carib Nation, we are going to talk with a photographer who specializes in showing life as it is through her photography. We'll explain up next on Carib Nation. When America wants to know what's happening in the Caribbean diaspora, there is one clear choice. Hello, welcome to Carib Nation. Both people inside and outside are very excited about today's program. Looking at you, I can tell that you've traveled the journey. <laughs> One television organization brings America close to the people, stories, and events that affects Caribbean life. Get close, get answers, get Carib Nation. Welcome to Carib Nation on location here in Kingston, Jamaica, this time at the home and studio of Maria Lyacona, a photographer who specializes in black and white photography. After having traveled the world with Time, Look, Life magazine, Sports Illustrated, what would be the attraction that kept her in Jamaica for the past 45 years? Maria Lyacona, welcome to Carib Nation. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure to come to you after having seen your work in Washington. Uh, you, the, my introduction to you was at your exhibition at the International Monetary Fund, mm -hmm. and many people were impressed with the detail and the feeling that many people got from your photography. Let's go back a little bit and talk about you. Uh, you are not a Jamaican by birth. Let us get some background on where you were born and how did you get to Jamaica? Uh, I'm not going to tell you when I was born. <laughs> <laughs> I was born in Cleveland, Ohio. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother and father, I'm a first generation Italian in the United States. And I came to Jamaica in 1955 uh, on an assignment, a photographic assignment. And fell in love with the place. In in 1955, it was literally a paradise mm. in many, many ways. Not mm. only uh, be the natural beauty, but the people, everything. And I went back to New York and quit my job. Came back to Jamaica. Just like that? Just like that. Wow. It wasn't just like that, but yeah, I but mean, <laughs> <laughs> they all wanted me to come back. And then when I got here, mm -hmm. uh, the same people who wanted me to come back said I was boxing bread out of the photographer's mouth here in Jamaica and all sorts of things, and they wouldn't give me a permit. Mm -hmm. So I opened up a boarding house for the first year and uh, bought along, decided that I was going to, they weren't going to get rid of me that easy. You bought the system all the way. Bought the system, and, and they all, in the end, it all worked out very nice. Yeah. Everyone was really, I think they were afraid of this. Intrusion. Well, no, this also, I, in 1955, I looked a little bit different than I do today, and I was very, not aggressive, but I knew what they needed here, and I wanted to help them. And I think they, I, I think I, afraid, I scared them at first, because mm -hmm. I, I put in picture libraries and did that kind of work in the beginning, mm -hmm. to show them how they could use photography. Uh, in fact, just recently, Someone's written something who's been here early too uh, in the advertising business, and and I was just happy to just pick up and read this thing that I really changed the whole face of photography in Jamaica mm, yes. by using local people for ads and calendars. Everything was, you know, very Caucasian people from abroad and little pink cheek babies on mm. pablum ads, and, and I said, no, you have beautiful people. Do it. And here. Show your people. And this yeah. is what. This is how it started. Mm -hmm. Were you always interested in photography, or, or when did that interest surface? All my life. Surface? I mean, my father was a photographer. I, see. I think I must have shot my first pictures before I was even 10. You know, I was with him and shooting pictures. So no, I knew. I was very lucky. I knew I wanted to be a photographer. Mm -hmm. It never strayed. 
That makes it a lot easier when you know what you want. It's a lot easier, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, you have traveled around the world. Yes. And uh, done a lot of photography for Time. Time, and, well, uh, Time Incorporated, but I was really with uh, Life Magazine and Sports Illustrated. But I also did a lot of work outside of that with Lowell Thomas. I went, I did The Seven Wonders of the World, mm -hmm. which was a still photographer, and traveled with him around the world. And then people say, yeah, have you been around the world? You land up in, in Jamaica. Jamaica. <laughs> it says something for Jamaica, doesn't it? Of course, yes. <laughs> now, tell us a little bit about that international assignment life the, the fact that you you're moving from place to place you're sent it's to some of the biggest very very especially to someone at my age then it was, it was like a like a fairyland mm -hmm. but you work i had to work very very hard i had to, uh, i started out assisting large uh, uh, gordon parks i assisted him on, on assignments Elliot Ellisop, and these were all very famous. Margaret Burke White, I, I, I printed her photographs for her. You know, you start at the bottom. I really started in photography as an apprentice to my father, mm -hmm. and then further. You don't go to school really to learn photography. Learn on the job. No, it's, yeah. it's, it's really an, it's a, it's an apprentice type of, mm -hmm. and I was lucky enough to be born in an era where apprenticeship was still true, a valuable yeah. thing, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was very, I've been very lucky, mm. uh, very lucky. What was the most memorable of your assignments while you were working in the international arena? Uh, I think probably uh, I went to Saudi Arabia with Lowell Thomas and um, I was put in the harem. We stayed overnight. There's no hotels in those days. And we were in Dahran, which is the capital of Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. And Ibn Saud, the king, there were two women on the crew, the copywriter and myself. And we had to go in. We stayed in his harem mm -hmm. with, with all his wives. And I couldn't take a camera in. And uh, we couldn't wear slacks. Yeah. We couldn't drink, we couldn't smoke, we had to wear skirts, we had to ha keep, we w used to wear caps because we were supposed to have our head covered. Head covered yeah. In that, this, like, you're talking about 1953. Whoa. And it was unbelievable. And uh, the, one of his wives gave me a watch with the king's name on it, a solid gold watch. And um, one of the interpreters over there said, nudged me and said, look, you can't take, you could take the watch, but the custom here is that you have to give something in return. Mm -hmm. Well, I was in a box of bricks, and <laughs> what I did is, I had a pair of something like this, but a little, you know, Woolworths, mm -hmm. um, little yeah. string of pearls, little cheap pearls, and I took them off and gave them to her. Well, she almost went wild because she just thought she never had anything. She's lots of gold, on, but she never had a, a simple little <laughs> string of simple. pearls. Yeah. So it was that was it sticks that comes in my mind every now and again. Mm. It was a very, I think of the whole trip that was the most, and I had to ha we had lunch with very important people like <laughs> Ten Singh, who was um, Hillary's uh, guide to Mount Everest. He had just mm, come down nice. and, you know, met very important people like that, mm -hmm. but not, what I say important people, maybe not in the general framework, but people who've accomplished some wonderful, nice. wonderful things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How did you develop your style? You use a lot of black and white. I am, well, I had to do color to earn a living, but black and white is my, that's again where I come from. Uh, Black and white photography is still considered probably the only art form of photography. Why do because, you say that? Well, I'll tell you, it lasts. I can show you a photograph. If my father was still alive, he'd be, I think, 100, and, and 100 plus. This is a picture he took of his father in Italy when he was a teenager. I have it still upstairs. It's, it's like he took it today.
Mm. Now you show me what color photograph somebody did. If you were married, maybe you had your cook, I, all people call me, Maria, someone took my photographs when I got married. And I went, looked at them, they're gone. I said, what do you mean they're gone? You're long. No, they just faded away. Yeah, the color is gone. So color is beautiful to look at, but it is not lasting. We don't know yet how long it's going to last. Even even colored movies that they've had to recolor them every now and again because they lose their yes, kids, their, their shade. So black and white has been around from the origin from the early 1800s, and those prints are still being shown in museums. The actual yes. print. So that is one of the reasons, and also black and white is. Uh, I can do things in black and white that I don't have to worry about what color shirt you're wearing. Little it doesn't something matter. Off balance right, and someone says, things. what a beautiful picture. Boy, that boy, look at that boy's shirt. I don't want people to look at the shirt. I want to look at his eyes. So in black and white, this is why I think the book uh, shows people's actual, what they really look like, the expression. I can get the, especially in a, uh, in a, uh, a multiracial country like Jamaica is. We have people from like Every me, color. dead white to, yeah. to all shades of grays and Ebony. and there are really no what I call <clears throat> excuse me. There are no black people mm. in Jamaica. They are shades of brown, dark browns, reddy browns. We even call people here red, you know, <laughs> of all these strange <laughs> ways. So bl my black and white photography and shades of gray really, I think, this is why I think this was successful, because people are not seeing colors as we see them. They're seeing expressions on people's face. Yes. You yeah. know, uh, it's, this is, this now, is why I think. Is photography of people your choice? Do you, what, well, do you have a specialty that you think you well, really like, excel in? Well, I like people. I mean, I love, that's why I came here, is because the people, uh, no, I think, I prefer to work with people, yes. Mm -hmm. You know, I prefer to work with them. Uh, because that's what the whole idea of photography was from the very beginning, was to take, was to replace the person who couldn't have his painting done. Mm -hmm. So he had a little photographer take his picture, you know. Mm -hmm. and that's what it was all about. Mm -hmm. you yes, know, and telling the uh, story. Telling the story and telling, uh, this is why a lot of the photographs, you see what they wore at that particular time. You see their environment, how they lived. You know, uh, there's an early picture in there of a very, very aristocratic man here, a George Seymour Seymour, who owns, who was really the founder of the whole Seymour lands mm -hmm. here. And he's sitting in a, a very nice wooden chair, which was the period of that time in the 50s. And you see the same chair in Trinidad, you see it in Barbados. It was a kind of a tropical, so that, shows in the photographs, you know, that type of thing. That's why I like people sort of in their own environment yes. and what they do. Maybe in the picture it shows what they did for a living, what they like. And this is something that, as just you said, because it, it creates the history, it's easy to go back and recreate, restore, if one wants to, but you, you have something that you can exactly. use as a base. When you photograph people, they say the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. When you photograph people, especially in black and white, the eyes of the soul, the windows of the soul, they say, what is it that you see in the camera that gets that message across? Well, I don't see it in the, the camera. camera. I just use the camera to see what I see. What you see. The camera the camera is just capturing what's in front of it. It's up to me to keep talking while that camera's there. I'm not looking in the camera at all. Once I set it up, mm -hmm. you know, I have a, a, a cable release that I'm setting it off with, but I'm talking to them, I'm laughing with them, I'm smiling with them. I even try and get them mad. I do all sorts of things. And you just wait for that. Everyone has a twinkle in their eye. Everyone has that moment where they are beautiful. Mm. I don't believe that there are ugly people. People, uh, it, sometimes we, we become ugly in how we behave and what we, what we say. But if you look at people and being very 
you know, with no prejudice. Right. You know, I get excited to see somebody with a very black skin and it's almost like velvet, mm -hmm. you yeah. know. And it's just, it's just the, how I feel about people, I guess. I don't know. When you uh, decided to put together or put your paintings together, my photographs. Yeah, your photographs. Sorry. That's all right. What What did you want to say when you started to put them together? In a, in a, did you, was it, a, it never. It, it, it's something that just something you don't plan. I planted a book on Jamaica, but I'd seen so many books on Jamaica, and I won't mention names or anything, but. They're always for somebody else. The books in Jamaica have always been, been not for the Jamaican, they're for the tourists. They're for people who want to come here and lay in the sun. And all the people in the books were boy on a beach, or girl climbing tree. These people are people, they have names. They are, I mm -hmm. and I wanted to do something for the Jamaican. I don't care if a foreigner ever buys this book. It doesn't mean, I mean, if they do, it's quite nice. I mean, great, they'll, be, they'll like it. But I did this book for Jamaicans. Mm -hmm. And this is what it's all about. Yes. And, uh, and it also shows, I wanted to show the multi, you know, this, it's kind of a cl cliche that people say, out of many one people. But this country is definitely that motto is so perfect for Jamaica. Mm -hmm. It really is people from all colors, all races, all religions. I mean, it's, yes. it's Jamaica to me, and I've been to the other islands, and you don't see it as much in Trinidad, for instance, because it's more predominant East Indian. It's more predominant East Indian in, in okay. Guyana, mm -hmm. in Barbados, I, I don't, don't know. Other. It's that kind of, it's never melted the way Jamaican has. Mm -hmm. You know, you get people with Oriental mixed with Chinese, yes. with uh, Indian, Indian and yes. black and white and all sorts of things. I mean, it's really, and the Euro I think this is why so many Europeans like it here because they're fascinated. When this book was reprinted in Italy, I went to Italy to do it to mm -hmm. sentimental reasons and all. And they, all want to come to Jamaica. They had, ne you know, they hear about Jamaica and they mm -hmm. hear about reggae and all that. But when they saw the, the I'm talking about the men in the press room. I see. I'm talking I about see. the man at the computer who had to do a little work on the things. Uh, you know, the man who set the type and all this. They were the ones who were so because they could appreciate God. the details. Oh, yes. And they said, Jamaica, what beautiful people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I think this is what I tried to do. And you show in the book called Jamaica uh, Portraits, 1955 to 1998, which is the length of time you've been here. That's right. Uh, it's actually almost the last 50 years 50 of, this, years of, of so. this, uh, this century. Yeah. How have you recorded the changes well, in Jamaica over time? And there are some changes, but they're very little changes. Very little changes. I mean, there, you'll see a photograph in there of children carrying water on their heads back in the early 50s, 50s and 60s. Yeah, 50s, 60s. I have a picture in 96 with carrying water. The only yeah. difference is now they're using plastic buckets instead of, <laughs> instead of galvanized. I see. See, I don't think we've improved on it changed at all. That much. No, yeah. we haven't. That's an interesting commentary. And, uh, now, you said that uh, this is for Jamaicans, and you've been to the rest of the Caribbean. I've been to many places in the Caribbean, yes. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that, uh, of course, there is a common thread throughout most of the Caribbean, and, and as you pointed out, the difference in Jamaica is what makes that interest, that creates that interest for a photographer. But when one looks at portraits, mm -hmm. uh, one looks at a portrait quite often by itself, as, a, as, a, as an entity by mm -hmm. itself. And you're telling a story of Jamaica by your photographs, mostly as through you the said, through the, the pictures, mm -hmm. mostly of people mm -hmm. in their environment. Do you get from the people themselves a sense of how they see you as you do your work and what you're trying to say for them? I think so. I get very close to the people. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, 
almost every time, especially when I'm out on location in the mm -hmm. country. I always have them come and look in the camera and let them snap a picture or two of their child or something mm -hmm. to get them really feeling about it. Oh, I never just go in and take a picture of anybody. Mm -hmm. I tell them what I want to do. I talk to them for quite a while. I maybe have a Polaroid shoot a couple of them. And then I also tell them, you know, you don't look too tidy. Mm -hmm. Why don't you, do you want me to take a picture? Let's make you look nicer and they'll go inside and put on another you know, something mm -hmm. nicer, clothes and everything. And the average West Indian loves his photograph taken. Mm -hmm. They really like their picture taken. Mm -hmm. And they, they really are very uh, animated. They're very, they're, they're, most people here are easy to photograph, I find. Very easy. Because yeah. they... They're not shy. They're no. Yeah. Oh, gosh, they're not <laughs> shy. Not at all. They all are very animated. Mm -hmm. and they have very strong opinions. Mm -hmm. uh, they know their likes and they know their dislikes, and they're not fools. Don't mm -hmm. take a West Indian for a fool. True. True. People, you know, just yeah. say. They no. resent that uh, insult Definitely. to their intelligence, yes. I have yeah. a great, great respect mm -hmm. for the people in this country in all walks of life. Mm -hmm. I have some that I don't respect, but I mean, <laughs> but on a of whole. Of course, that happens yeah, in every, that happens in every setting. But, um, no, I, Again, I, all I have to say is that I'm very, very lucky. Yes, I'm very fortunate to, to fall into something that you... Well, uh, I didn't fall into it. I'm very delivered. I, it was very... Uh, I could have easily, back in 55, said, oh, this is, this is not going to work, and leave and go back. Mm -hmm. But... That fighting I, spirit. I have... Well, it's, it's a... I, I work very hard. I'm very determined, mm -hmm. and uh, and also a bit of a purist. I think that's why I love this country too. And yes. this, when you're talking about the photographs, that is really that's pure. The no pictures are manipulated. This is why I'm having a very difficult time uh, with the computer age, because uh -huh. you know that the manipulation of, of oh, work. Time. Yes. Let's talk a little bit about that in terms of um, what you think that is really doing to an art form like photography. I don't. I think we'll always. We're, they're always going to need us. I mean, mm. we we may go in different directions, like but in advertising now they can use it much more. They can take now anybody's photograph and make it look great. Mm -hmm. So they can probably not have use a lot of people that they normally would have to use otherwise. Mm -hmm. But. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it has its place and it will always, mm -hmm. you know, but, but this kind of photography will always be there. Right. You, know. you also have theater interests. I have what? Theater. Oh, yes. And yeah. you work with the National Dance Theater Company. Well, uh, I think that's one of the uh, most important things that's happened to me in Jamaica. In 1964, I, m I met Rex Nettleford. Mm -hmm. I only uh, actually I photographed him. He was doing uh, uh, an audition for a movie that they were going to do in Jamaica. And they called me from New York and asked me if I would take stills of this audition. And that's how I met uh, Pre uh, Rex Nettleford. Mm -hmm. and, and I just gave him, that's another thing, I give everybody my pictures when I take them for a photograph. I don't wait for them to call me. Yes. I just, you know, you've helped me, here's, take these, I hope you like them. And I took them to Rex, and he says, my God, would you like to, you, did you ever do theater photography? I said, oh, yes, I, was a, I did a lot of theater work in New York. I did a lot of shows. I did a lot of, uh, you know, uh, I did PR work, like press, we were like a press, press photographer. And I had to photograph a lot of the shows and things. So he said, why don't you come one night and work with us in the dance? And boy, that was the beginning of something wonderful. Yes. Yes. And for 30 years, I was their official You've been photographer. With Tell us a little bit about I've done a book on there. I have a book on the dance company. On the dance company. Yeah, two well. of them I've done on that. Tell us a little bit about what that entails following. Hard. Theater. It's the hardest work Imagine. that I can do because when I first started, I not only I did every, I went to every rehearsal for three months before, every night for three months. Wow. 
and you shoot pictures, you shoot pictures, and you shoot pictures, and then you see, oh boy. And then you do the same dance over. I knew the dancers as much as the dancers. I can did. imagine. I knew who was late and why did you do that? You, you know, you, you didn't jump as high. They look you at can me. actually see that. Yeah, right, through the, yes, through the lens. And I just shot thousands and thousands of photographs. And then when they come, when they open, they play for three weeks. And I photographed that every night again. So each season, I would photograph probably. I, I would, I don't know, I never even looked it up, but I can imagine at least 20,000 images, wow. which maybe 30 are used. Yeah. See, I learned that. That's what's trained at Live Magazine. doesn't matter. Film is the most, inex that's the le least of your, when you're, if you're traveling all the way to Afghanistan to photograph something, you don't want to run, you can't come you home without the picture because you ran out of film. <laughs> and that has happened. Wow. So film is not, you know, I just shot film. I was trained that way. So you have a lot of, lot of negatives. Mm -hmm. But you need all that lot to get those exact, sure. precise ones. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you. It's been interesting getting from you an idea of, of your passion for this country after Oh, how many years here? 40, 40 well, I get years? Well, down again. <laughs> I love it, though. But it's, it's wonderful to, to hear from an American what you see. Well, I'm a Jamaican-American. No, Jamaican-American. I'm, I'm an American, Jamaican, Italian, whatever <laughs> I am. I don't know. I'm one of them out of many one people in a strange right. way. Well, it's been a pleasure talking with you. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank Nation. you for coming in my home and doing this. Yes. Now you know why black and white photography will be around forever. I hope you've enjoyed today's program from a different perspective on photography. Until next time, thanks again for watching us in Carib Nation. I'm Doris Dean, and please send us your comments. Let us know what you think about Carib Nation. Our address is at the end of the program. Take care.